Pain Sucks Pod. Um, and uh, we're going from the Pain Sucks Podcast website or Facebook page for the first time ever. And of course, we'll turn this into some YouTube and some audio very, very soon too. But today is really, really exciting because I love it when we actually get to chat with people who um, have their own journey that they just went through, but they're also experts in their field when it comes to pain management. And so today is no exception. Um, and so we're super happy to have Dr. Derek Ferguson with us. And Dr. Derek is a um, practitioner in the Northeast in New Jersey, but he's got some clinics around the country. And actually, we met because you were going through some of your own health challenges, really. Would you uh, kind of a, tell everyone about what you've been dealing with and what you're uh, breaking through? Right. Yeah. So it's, it, it's amazing because uh, we, we met through a post. Uh, I actually ruptured a disc, uh, which was sequestered into the spinal canal and, and wrapped around the spinal canal and just created a nightmare of a problem that we've had. And uh, I met because I saw a post that you put out there and I just said, hey, man, what are you doing in regards of disc herniations? Because everybody was pointing me in the direction of surgery. They, you know, they've never really done any research into, you know, the studies of how sequestered discs can heal on their own. They immediately just rushed into surgery. So I reached out to you in regards of that. And to be honest, if, if I didn't reach out to you, I think I would be on a different path, honestly. So, yeah. you know, yeah. well, I, remember, I remember that first that first Facebook message was one that most are which is one of desperation mm -hmm. in sense because uh the, when the pain scale is a 15 out of 10 uh and, but your mind says that you you know that you can do this that you can beat this thing without them cutting um it, it like putting those two together is just is so hard to do so i remember that first post of desperation i really think like just for people to understand like when people reach out to me they they want me to tell them to you know go get this anti-inflammatory so it really is just about hope and understanding that really in the end um it's just gonna hurt for a few months right sure. like even this morning interacting with people everyone wants that pain to go away now and i get it but there's really nothing that people have however what was funny is that over a couple of months as you were healing and getting hope and starting to see stuff like you started educating me on some things and the reason I have you here today is because I really haven't met or spoken to or found anyone else online who has the power uh, to understand the knowledge behind things like stem cells. Um, and of course, that's one that comes up a lot with people is, hey, my disc is gone, uh, especially with ruptured people, even bulges. Um, how do I replace that? How do I get back on track uh, with the you know repair and the cartilage? And is it going to help me with pain? And like, the, the data is pretty clear when it comes to the spine that stem cells themselves have not like produced maybe the way they have in other areas of the body. However, before we go to that, what I wanted Derek to do is just really expand on this genetic healing called stem cells. And then hopefully everyone's going to share this right now because we're going to tell them in just a few minutes about the next level of genetic healing, which is going to blow stem cells out of the water and make it look like something of the past. Uh, that doesn't really work anymore. But let's start with like, how did you find this genetic healing of stem cells? What do you think of it? And if you could just maybe like give us a rundown on what it is. Sure. Yeah. So, so in the beginning, we started researching stem cells inside of the practice years ago, and uh, we were going to implement it into the practice, and just never really found a source or good research showing these profound benefits that it had you know you hear of everybody running down to Panama doing stem cells and all these miracles happen per se right well we haven't seen a lot of that stuff so so what we did was we put a ton of time and research into stem cells how they work mechanism of travel and didn't really like any of the the ways that it did one of the ways that it, it doesn't cross the, the blood-brain barrier very well to get into discs per se and yeah they're injecting it into discs and they're trying to rebuild the cartilage off of that uh, but it doesn't seem to be working all that well right so one of, those, one of the scenarios that we have to think about is that what is going to work the best long term? Because without that, it's you can't do stem cells every three months and feel better, right? Because at the end of the day, it's just a prescription and it does no better. So we wanted something long term and we found that the research didn't show long term success inside of the spinal canal, reducing inflammation long term in regards to the injury that I had, right? And, and that's the thing is with stem cells, is that they will rebuild cartilage and they will help out with the inflammation process, but only to a certain point. And, and it's being shown now, and that's why there's a lot more research that's, that's going in a different direction like we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. 
That's awesome. So what you're so so for a while there, I mean, obviously the excitement the experts had uh, was that what we could do was take. Well, first of all, back up a second. What's a stem cell? Let's talk about that. So so a stem cell is just a young cell that's usually taken from umbilical cord blood or embryonic cells, and they're mesenchymal stem cells. So the nice part about stem cells is that they don't have a receptor site if they're taken from cord blood. Now, what you'll hear a lot of times is you'll hear a lot of times they're extracting them from fat tissue from the existing patient or even bone marrow from the existing patient. Now, we have to remember, right, why that's going to be ineffective for the long-term purpose, because if they're taking marrow cells and they're putting that back into you, well, your stem cells at that point in time are how old? 30, 40, 50, some people are getting this done at 60, 70 years of age, so your stem cells are that old. Now, the reality is, right, whenever we're born, that one in about 10,000 uh, cells are stem cells. So it's a pretty high volume. By the time that we turn 20, it's one in 100,000. By the time that we're 60, it's one in a million. So our stem cells are depleting in time, hence why if a baby gets cut, they heal much faster than an, than an adult. Now, if you're going to take those stem cells from an individual that's 20, 30, 40, 50 years of age, that's how old their stem cells are. And then all you're doing is putting them back in and you're expecting that rapid growth, which doesn't happen. Now, if you take a stem cell, mesenchymal, from umbilical cord blood, per se, you're getting those young stem cells. And that's the theory is that they don't have a receptor site. They don't have a memory site. So what they do is they go out into the body and they heal the body if you put them intravenously or if you put them directly into a joint or a disc or anything like that, they're gonna heal locally in that area. Now the theory also is that if you put them into an IV form, that they're gonna go out and they're gonna explore everything in the body and they're gonna repair the inflammation from there and they're gonna repair the areas in need. The problem with that was, is let's say for example, that you take it from bone marrow. Well, what you're doing is you're drilling into the hip bone, you're extracting it, so you're creating inflammation right away in the body. So then as soon as you re-inject you introduce those stem cells again back into the body, it's going to go where? It's going to go towards the site of inflammation. It's going to want to fix that area as opposed to taking stem cells out of umbilical cord and putting them into the body that way. So obviously there's benefits from, from going from the younger cells because you're going to get better healing. So they're just, in short, stem cells are just young cells that are there to rebuild and to make tissue of any sort that don't have a memory site. And so obviously, you know, with these stem cells, one of the things that they have the ability to do is become... Uh, wherever they're finding the area to repair. And you're saying because they don't have receptor sites, they're not predetermined uh, and as like maybe cartilage might be uh, that right. we're injecting into people, but that they can actually go into an area and then become whatever that area is and promote healing through that, right? Right. So I've, I've known about this for, I don't know, maybe probably a decade, right? But I know the technology has been around and it's getting better. And I can remember when people would come in and tell me they had it injected in their knees or their shoulders and they were getting eh, results. And then over the last bunch of years, we're seeing better results, but um, we're not seeing like amazing results yet, at least when it comes to the spine. Can you talk, talk to us about that? Yeah, I mean, the delivery mechanism, right? Whether you're gonna put it into an IV form or you're gonna put it into, right into the disc per se, it's, it's not necessarily the mechanism of transport. So, the, the problem that we have is that once we, once we introduce these stem cells or into the blood directly, not into the specific area through an injection, it's going to travel throughout the body. And if we think about it, right, who's getting these procedures done? It's usually older folks, right? And when I say older, I mean people over the age of 30 years of age. So we've already got this systemic inflammatory response in our body. So if you introduce it into the bloodstream, it's going to go to those areas and it's going to try to fix inflammation. Now, again, if you put it directly into a disc per se, a lot of that is going to start to heal that area, but it's also going to disperse out into other areas that, that it needs to go to for areas in, of inflammation. So if we didn't have any inflammation in our body, then yes, it would have a much better effect. But if we really think about it, everybody has inflammation. And, and unfortunately, with America, we're just getting more and more inflamed every single day. So as we introduce this, it just goes out and it scouts out all the areas. Now, does it have an effect? It does have an effect. Does it have the great effect that we're looking for? No, it doesn't because of that chronic systemic or all around inflammation in our body. Now, let's say, for example, if we lived the best life possible and we didn't have that inflammation throughout, we would have better, better results right away. That's for sure. And that's not to say, right, that you can't do four, five, six rounds of it. 
and get these amazing results. But but who has the money for that, right? I mean, you're talking tens upon tens of thousands of dollars at that point in time. Exactly. And and that's one thing I've noticed is that the people who are getting these really good results are the people who were headed into these procedures and had already conquered this inflammatory lifestyle. So their diet was good, their exercise habits, their spine was moving correctly. And that's the other thing is like, you know, if you haven't moved a joint in 20 years correctly, whether you knew it or not, there, there's no amount of injection that's going to increase your joint motion, which is why one, the spine is such a weak place for these to be successful because people haven't moved the spine correctly, probably maybe even in their entire life. Right. Knees and shoulders, sure, we can do some PT, we can get them in a good place and then go do it. But what about the inflammatory process? And so, you know, while stem cells were great, one of the things that the researchers are finding is that it was it was a great platform to spring off of. It was this idea that what we could do is harness the body's own genetic ability to heal itself and then spread that message through the body. But like you said, it's not going to happen in a broken, beat up body, especially if we're removing our own inflamed stem cells and then putting them back into an inflamed body. We're just basically getting amazing healing at the site where we took the cells from. Right. So, I um, mean, that, even that's going to be temporary. So that being said, w- w- you know, when we when we spoke a couple months ago, when you were getting better, like you said to me, hey. I'm having a pretty good day because I just went and had an IV full of exosomes. And I was like, I kind of heard that term, but I immediately said, awesome, because I'm that guy that's like, do whatever, man, just get better. Like I'm, I don't subscribe to too many philosophies per se, like as the only one anymore, other than I do believe the body heals itself and we just got to do good things. But I was like, all right, I, I immediately interacted with you. And then I'm like, Google and I started reading and I was blown away by this new technology. So what we're telling people right now is like, hey, listen, while stem cells are a good platform, I want you to really pay attention to what Derek's going to talk about right now when it comes to exosomes, especially for those of us with disc problems and spinal issues. So Derek, maybe you could talk us a little bit through, because I I know like not too many people in the entire world know about this. You do. Um, Like what's that transition from a stem cell to an exosome? Maybe let's Let's hit that science first, and then we'll talk about the delivery. All right. So at the end of the day, exosomes are a form of stem cell. They, they are mesenchymal stem cells. Now, exosomes, all that they really are is that they're extracellular vesicles. So what does that mean, right? So let's, let's think of it in regards of this. Let's think of um, a cell being like New York City, how we have all the buildings in a cell, all the buildings in the city, right? So each, each single building would be a cell. Now, how do cells communicate with each other and how do they transfer information? Well, what happens is, is that the people that are in the building, they come out and they go to other buildings. And that's the transmission and that's the communication from cell to cell, right? So that's all an exosome really is. An exosome is communication from one cell to another in order of healing, talking to it, repair. Now, years ago, they used to think that the science showed that there was only a few ways of communication between cells, right? Hormonal immunology, and then even nervous. So so nerves communicate and they send messages back and forth. Well, now all the new research sh- shows that it's extracellular vesicles like exosomes. And what they're doing is they're going out and they're communicating. So they're, they're, these, they're these little stem cells that all they do, again, no memory site, right? So they come out and they talk to other cells, they find areas of damage and inflammation, and then they actually start to communicate and they start to tell the body, hey, release more stem cells or fix the inflammation or fix the healing. So there are these communication factors, which for a long term, we just didn't really understand. We always thought that, right, the body needs to have something put into it in order to heal. But it doesn't work that way. It can never heal that way. We know that, right? The body can only heal from the inside out. And that's what these cells do, that whenever we introduce these exosomes into the body, they literally go out and they scout and they talk to every single cell tissue in the body to find out where the damage is and what needs to be done. And then they start to produce all the healing factors that need to happen for that body. It's just absolutely incredible, the communication that's happening inside of the body. And that's all that it is. It's just a communication method. So instead of us assuming by injecting stem cells at the, at the macro level, assuming that they're just going to go hit that area and reproduce and heal, these exosomes are actually communicative chemicals, molecules, forms of stem cells that are actually investigating 
seeing the needs the body has and helping the body then produce what it needs to do the healing. So again, we're getting into this innate internal healing, which is always the way to go because, you know, again, one of the failures of stem cells is just going, Hey, let's just inject that in there. And then fingers crossed the body like runs with it and thank you for your five grand. And we'll just see what happens versus like now, why don't we allow the body to send its own messengers to interpret its needs and then begin the process of healing in the area. So what was your experience with it? Because I know you said to me, Hey, I just plugged in an IV and had exosomes sent around my body. So what was that? What was the purpose of sending it around your body when you had a clear disc herniation in your low back? Right. I mean, the, the purpose was, is that when the pain's a 30 out of 10, you're going to do anything that you can. And, and it was just one of those scenarios where I did a ton of research, right? Cause I'm just, I'm laying there and there's nothing else that I can do because every single time that I move, I, it's just the worst pain of my life. Yep. And I had to get out of pain. So, so it was, it was a scenario where I just did a ton of research and I said, you know what? I have to get regenerative medicine into my body. There's no way around it, right? The inflammatory response is there and I've got to reduce Oh, we lost you a little bit there, Derek. And I needed to choose something that was going to work for the long term for me to get me back to where I needed to be. So, so my, my thinking behind that was that I had to put the best, cleanest stuff into my body so it can communicate and then reduce that inflammation. And, and we ran with it. So we, we put exosomes um, literally into my blood, and it took about 30 seconds for it to happen. And the next thing you know, I'm, I'm down for two days, just in bed, exhausted, can't move. And that's that communication method that's happening inside of the body. What's happening is that these exosomes were introduced and they're going out and they're talking to my body and it just showed how damaged my body was at that point in time. Inflammatory loves dairies, greens. I don't eat a lot of that stuff, right? And even whenever I got injured, I was taking a ton of anti-inflammatory vitamins and and resting and doing a ton of anti-inflammatory work for my body to get it ready because I knew that inflammation was just a killer. So, so once we introduced that, those exosomes literally went out, they figured out where the areas of damage were and just wiped me out for two days straight. I couldn't get out of bed. I didn't even have enough energy to get up and get a glass of water. So then after that, that's when the healing really started. So these exosomes, they went out and they explored the body for the next two days, figured out where all the damage was and then started to send the mechanisms of healing. Now, the, the, the great part is, is that on day three, it was this dramatic turn that whenever I woke up in the morning, I went from having a limp, unable to walk, pain on, you know, pain, probably a 20 out of 10, inability to lift my daughter, inability to lift a pencil. That's how bad the pain was to really feeling like I can lift the Empire State Building the next day on day three, rather. And clearly what was happening was this, the, your, the, the awesome innate ability of the brain to heal uh, was now communicating through these exosomes and instructing the body to turn on these amazing healing uh, mechanisms inside the body. So it it crushed you while it was taking its data, right? Like I mean, it was it was literally taking stock of your entire body, yep. making a list of what it needed, so that when it turned on, it crushed you because it was going crazy for healing. I mean, think about like. Think about like the flu, like you go down, you lay in bed for a day and a half or two days or three days, you can't move, it feels terrible. And everyone's like, this sucks, I'm sick. And I would beg to say, you're not sick. The reason you're not moving is because you're healing. Yeah. Your immune system needs you to lay in bed while it takes stock, all the virus, so it can beat it up. And yeah, it doesn't feel great, but you're healing and you're saying it worked the same way. And I love that because genetically you were healing you, not some something out in space or some technology trying to heal you yeah yeah i mean it, it really was an amazing factor yeah we introduced it and it was it was, we used what my body had so it it accounted and it gathered up and it said you know what we need to rebuild the cartilage we need to rebuild the tissue we need to reduce the inflammation and really right i mean and this is this has been a huge learning curve for me Oh, because my my old theory was is that we have a disc herniation let's let's move that spine and let's change the structure so that disc herniation will reabsorb now there there's much truth in that however the inflammation process is the pain process if we can't reduce that inflammatory response we can never get rid of the pain 
because pain is, is just going to be a factor on the nerve, right? And that's exactly what happened. So these exosomes, they went out. And as they went out, they just explored everything. And they and it, it told my body, here's what you need to do. So you need to send stem cells. You need to send cartilage. You need to send mitochondria for energy. You have to send all these processes out to start to fix the body. And the, the amazing thing that I've seen is at every single day, right? It's been about four months. And, and I'm going actually next week for another dose. But it's been about four months. And every single day, it's exponentially better which is just amazing. And I haven't done anything else, right? I still continue anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory stuff. Yeah, we're losing you a little bit. I don't know if it's the Wi-Fi here, the storms from Monday still, right. but. Okay. So you, you got me again? There you go. We got you back. Yeah, I got you again. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's definitely. I'm, I'm like the, the other viewers from the other day knew that we were having problems. Supposedly, Xfinity fixed it, but we know how amazing their customer service is. So, um, yeah. yeah. So if we lose you a little bit, that's all right. Keep going. I'm I'm hoping that the audio and the video will still uh, drag out. And we can tell people. But what sure. you were basically saying was that each day was getting better as your body kept. Because the thing about these exosomes, it's not one and done. So as the healing continues, they're continuously taking an account. And they're continuously learning. And now you're going to back this thing up next week just, just to continue on that journey. You're also saying, like, this is not the end. Like, you don't just get these exosomes in an IV, go down for a couple of days, your body begins to heal. And so, you know, then the next stop is Dairy Queen and cancel your gym membership because you're feeling better and stop PT. Like, the, like, you, like well, how much better now can you work if you continue to do the right lifestyle things on top of this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's multifactorial, right? It's it's not just one thing. It wasn't one thing that, that got us into this position, and it's not one thing that's going to get us out either. You know, it's, it's always multifactorial. So if the, if the diet's not there, forget it. Don't even bother. If the exercise is in there, don't bother. If you're not moving those joints, don't bother, right? right. I mean, these, this has to happen in regards to healing. And it's this is just a facilitator to get your body to communicate better, to say, hey, here's the damage, here's the problems now. Send out the Send out the right stuff that our body needs, and our body will start to heal it. Absolutely. And the beautiful part about exosomes is that you're getting you're getting the daughters, 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 daughters communication. So you're getting all these reproductions down the line and they just keep sending more and more and more telling the body, hey, continuously fix, continuously fix, continuously fix. Now, the only reason that I'm going for for another round of this is is because I can. That, that's that's the reality. I mean, do I have to? No, I don't feel as though I have to. Um, you know, but I'm going to push this envelope a little bit further down the line as well. And I've got other areas of concern in my spine and where, where originally we thought that injecting these exosomes directly into the disc wasn't a good try it. And just send it as well. I love it. I love it. So listen, here's the only maybe piece of bad news that we have to tell people about exosomes and that um, they're learning about it before most even physicians have ever even heard about it. So, right. um, you know, the, the only bad news is like, they're going to, they're going to hang up after watching this or listening to this and they're going to go, where do I get this done? And unfortunately they're just not going to find a lot of places yet. So one sharing this would be huge because as more docs listen and learn, they're going to be able to offer um, and certainly we would hope that if you're a doctor listening to this and you have the ability in your office to offer these things, please reach out to Derek um, and he can get you set up with the people that are uh, the top scientists of this so we can start offering this to more people. And I would hope that people would start to say, hey, may, maybe maybe I could – and you address this too, Derek, but maybe I could um, drop how much gabapentin I'm taking or my oxy or my hydrocodone and uh, – and you know maybe this is something that I could I could look into as an alternative. Still with me? Yeah, I've been watching. So listen, everybody, I'm going to just um, chat this thing away and, and see if we can get him back on here. The idea behind why we wanted to have this chat today was because there is so much pain medication, so many people that are relying on that just to get through the day, and it's not necessary. And so one of the things we wanted to do was introduce that there is a, and we'll bring Derek back in a second um, when, he, when we get him logged back in. One of the things we want to do is um, offer alternatives in the pain management. So share this, 
Uh, do a little research, man. Google exosomes. I think you'll be blown away, especially when you do a little bit of scientific understanding of how it works with disks um, and has the ability to communicate with um, some chemistry that exists solely in the disk uh, and can offer healing. So if Derek doesn't hop on, listen, um, one of the things I'm going to do is put in the show notes what we talked about today. And then what we will do is we'll also put some links. I know... Um, Derek uh, is the only one that I know of offering this in the Northeast right now. I'm sure there's some others, but I don't know them. So if you're in the New Jersey, New York, uh, that whole area, um, you need to reach out to his clinic because this could uh, rapidly change your life for just about anything you're going through. Uh, if you have more questions, you're more than welcome to comment and we'll answer them. And I will put any of the um, uh, resources that he sends me in the show notes today. But remember, nobody gets to tell you that you can't heal. Not a single person. There is way more to healing than meds and surgery. It's about finding what works for you and just knowing that it's going to take time. It's a trauma that destroys us for a short period. But if we can continue to move and handle inflammation and do whatever we have to do in the meantime, then we'll get through this thing together. And we just appreciate you so much. This is the Pain Sucks Podcast. I'm Dr. Matt Malonis. With Dr. Derek Ferguson, it could have been on my end that knocked him off. It could have been the other on his. So uh, we'll get him back on at some point. Please share this because, my goodness, man, could people heal if they knew this. Remember, no one gets to tell you that you can't heal. And that's our tagline, and we're sticking to it. All right, everybody, have an amazing day.